Hello everybody, welcome to Patch Your Junction. I thought today I'd have a look at the Airfix Royal Scott that I bought recently from eBay. Um, it was in one of my previous videos, if you'd like to go back and have a look, please, please feel free. Um, this was uh, purchased for the princely sum, I think it was £15-ish plus postage. And uh, when I got it, it, it does run, but obviously I don't know how long it's been in storage for and sort of what condition it is inside, so I thought maybe a good idea to take the body off and uh, the tender and uh, have a look at its tender drive and maybe give it a, a nice clean and a lube up um, and see if we get some you know good service out of it going forwards. Um, let's just try it again and see if it runs. It did run when I tried it on the layout a little while ago, so nothing at the moment. Always does that, doesn't it, when you least expect it. A bit of growling. There we go. A little bit, so it is running. So I think definitely... You know, it could do with a service, couldn't it? And uh, a clean up, and I'm sure it'd run a lot smoother. So let's crack on and do that and dive in and have a look and see how it's made. Okay, so I thought the first thing maybe to check would be um, if the uh, power is being picked up from the wheels to supply this wire that runs underneath the drawbar to the uh, motor and the tender. So we'll just have a quick check. Got the old trusty crocodile clips here. That's good. That sounds good. So they're okay. Bit of hesitation on that one. And then we'll reverse. Ah, okay. <clears throat> so we're picking up okay there. Oh, a little bit there. Now and again, maybe a dirty contact. And a little bit the same on there. So maybe the uh, contacts... <clears throat> whatever design they are, need a good clean on there, so that's okay. Right, let's think about getting the body off and getting the motor out of the tenders. On the bottom of this it says, Airfix Products Limited, 1977, made in Hong Kong, and I can already see there's a big crack going across the bottom of the frame there, so I think we should be a bit careful with that. Um, might need, uh... yeah, we might need some super glue, so let's see how we get on. Okay, I think I'll start by trying to uh, undo these screws on the bottom of the tender. I've got a bit of movement on that one. Okay, put them in a little pot. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, that's very tight. Let's try a slightly. That's got it turning. All right. A slightly bigger enough screwdriver was needed there, I think. Pop that on there. And see. Now, I think someone said something about the, the buffer beams have to come off to uh, allow you to take these apart. So we'll give that a try. See if we get any movement. Yeah, we've got a bit of movement. And there's another screw here. Let's get that one out. Okay, let's have a look. What have we got? Yep. Okay. Tender body doesn't look too bad. I'll give it a dust off. It's just a bit dusty, but it seems to be okay. And then we've got, <clears throat> let's turn this around this way to get a better look. We've got the motor here. Uh, all right, yeah, so that screw that I took off there was holding the drawbar on as well, so that's sandwiched between there and the tender. Let's just watch that when it goes back on. And we've got a couple of screws here, I think. Holding this big weight on. I wonder if we get that undone, whether then the motor will pop out. Let's have a look. Okay, they came out fairly easily. Oh yeah, I can see straight away right across the frame here. We've got crack and cracked right across. So that's oh yeah, look at that. That's very weak. I think what I'm going to have to do there is we'll have to try and see if we can trickle, maybe trickle some super glue in there uh, and repair that frame. Put a bit of strength back in it before it all goes back together maybe um maybe able to be maybe i could glue a, a, a very 
thin piece of uh, plastic on top as well to try and strengthen it. I don't know. I'll have to have a look at that. Ah, oh, poor old thing. Never mind. I think what we'll do, we might be worth taking the wires off to see, to make the job a bit easier. Because obviously I need to get this tender frame off and away from the motor. Quite a small motor actually. It's a ring field motor. It's quite small compared to the uh, the Lima one and the uh, Hornby one. Yeah, quite small. It seems to have a different kind of mechanism on the back. A little gearbox in there by the look of it. So that's interesting. Okay, so what I think we'll do is maybe desolder those wires and see if we can get that frame off there. Right, just see if we can desolder these wires. I've marked the uh, I've marked one with some white paint and I know it's facing towards the rear of the tender, so hopefully we can get the wires back on in the correct order. Right, that one's off. Get it out of the way a bit. And let's get the other one off. Okay, that's off as well. Lovely. Let's turn that soldering iron off. Try not to uh, set fire to myself. Right, let's see if we can just pull the wires through now. Perfect. Okay. I don't know if you can see that, fuck guys, but look, that poor old frame is uh, hanging on by a wing and a press. So I think we'll give it a good old clean up because it's full of dust. And then <clears throat> I think I'll have to try and just trickle some super glue in there and uh, see if I can find a way to clamp it tight. It's obviously lost a piece there and there. I remember when I unpacked the locomotive, the little bits of plastic were falling out. There's a tiny bit there on the back, and if you can see that, that's loose. I'll see if I can straighten that up and put a little dob of super glue on that. And then my thought was maybe if I can get a thin strip of plastic, really thin, and just once this is once this is set, and, and maybe just glue it across there as well. One across there and one across there, just to try and give it a bit of strength for reassembly. We'll have to see how that goes, won't we? Okay, so that's something that needs doing. And here we've got the motor. Very compact, actually. Um, I'm assuming the brushes are underneath here. And uh, it looks like there might be some... I'm trying to see if there's any more. Yeah, all of this is cracked around here. Where these little tiny screws go in, that's cracked as well. Don't know whether how, how deep to delve into that and clean it up because if I try and unscrew, I think if I try and unscrew this and all this crumbles and falls apart, it's um you're chasing your tail a bit, aren't you? So I think maybe get the brushes out and try and clean the motor up in situ. And I'll put a little dab of super glue on there on that crack and there's a big crack underneath here as well just under here is a big crack where the two halves of the motor hold together so I'll put a tiny dab of super glue in there as well and uh, basically if it still runs after that and it runs smoothly and quietly every time we put a little bit of grease and oil on the on the gears I think we'll just run it for the time being and see how it is okay all right let's just give this a brush first get as much loose dirt off as possible Careful not to try and flick off any bits more bits of plastic. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, there you go. Old plastic, eh? Because he goes brittle. Let's give it a little blast with the cleaner. Leave that to air dry. And then we'll think about um, give it a wipe as well. It's difficult to know how far to go with some of these models, aren't they? If they're so fragile, I'd like to keep. I don't want to go too far with it and end up um, destroying it when it's so fragile. So it'd be nice to get it to a place where I can just say it's been cleaned, it's been lubed. We found those cracks, maybe we can find a way to strengthen them. We'll get it back together and get it running and enjoy it on the layout while it still goes. Let's move that out of the way. 
Right, let's leave that to air dry. <clears throat> and then, once that's air dried, I think we'll, um, as I say, I'll try super gluing it and see what we can do. Right, let's have a look at this motor. What have we got here? I think first things first, let's give this a little brush. It's not too bad, actually. I mean, there's not an awful lot of, you know, I've seen worse, that's for sure. There's a bit of dust in there and fluff and stuff. But not the worst I've ever seen. Bearing in mind, most of the other ones I've seen were mine. From my attic vine, so they were mine. Oh, dear. Right. Let's give that a clean. And again, let's leave that to air dry and then see what we can do with it. Okay, so went over the motor, um, as I say, sprayed it and let it air dry. I also got some of the cleaner on a <coughs> cotton bud and just went round and wiped it all over as well. Wasn't an awful lot of dirt to come off really, so not too bad. I think um, the brushes here look like they're behind here, here so I'm just going to see if there's a little cut out there. It looks like you can leave them out with the screwdriver maybe and just pop the brushes out. So if I can get those out, they can have a clean. Yep, that's all uh, right, okay. We'll pop that in. Got a little jar here with some cleaner in it. And see if we can get there's the spring. That can go in as well. Get the other one out of the way. Yep. Pop that in there. All right. Let's pop that to one side. There's the other spring. Pop that in that jar. And there's the two brushes there. See if we can see if they'll drop out. One did. So did the other one, so the brushes have dropped out. We'll pop them in and let them have a soak as well. Leave them for a bit, having a little soak. And what if we can see inside and see the... It doesn't look massively too dirty inside. Uh, I wonder if I can just turn... Can I turn this and, no, it doesn't want to turn. Can I just get in there and turn? Oh yeah. No, I thought maybe I could uh, turn it and try and clean the commutator. I think what I'll have to do is just squirt plenty of cleaner in there and let it air dry again. And for now, hope for the best and see how it runs. Only because I'm reluctant, as I said before, to take it apart because of all this cracking going on in the plastic here. I just don't end up with uh, basically a handful of plastic pieces like a big jigsaw puzzle. As I say, it's quite shiny in there. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. So it's quite shiny. So I think this is going to be a case of doing the best we can for now. We can do we can, the best we can with the materials provided. All right, let's leave that to air dry. And in the meantime, go and see if I can find something that um, I can always clamp that together with once I put some super glue on it. Okay, guys, I'm going to literally try and get some super glue. Got some on a lid here. I'm going to get some on, got some on this cocktail stick. I'm going to try and trickle it in here. With holding the crack open slightly. And see if this will glue back together. Same with this end, unfortunately. I think this end, I'm just gonna have to trickle it in because it's not really, it's more of a just starting to crack open. I'll get some in there. Let's get some on the back. Let's 
it's literally just uh, kind of falling apart as I look at it. Wipe the excess off. And then I'll stick it in this little hobby vise that I was given. And just not clamp it up tight because it's only plastic. But just enough to hold it in place while that super glue goes off, I think. And then what I was thinking was, once that's gone off, maybe just try and do a plastic strip across there and a plastic strip across there and see if that'll give it a bit of strength and hold it. That's all we can do. Right, okay, so this has been in held in this overnight to see how we get on. And I also <coughs> glued two small strips of plastic um, to try and give it some strength as well, just to see if it will keep the frame held together and uh, try and make it last a bit longer. I'll put a dob of super glue on that tiny bit at the end there that was split. I don't know if you can see that just there. That was split. Put a tiny dob of super glue on there as well to hold that together. So this uh, poor old under frame of the tender has uh, been in the wars a bit, hasn't it? I think the plastic's obviously just gone brittle with old age. So we'll do, we'll do our best. We'll see if we can get it all done back together. Right, and now I think what we'll do is crack on and have a look at the actual locomotive and I think I can see if I can get the body off that and clean the pickups on the wheels because I was going to test it it didn't seem to be picking up off all the wheels did it and I've already noticed that under here that's the point with you've already got a large crack appearing across there so again that might need a bit of glue um, I'm just going to try and undo these two screws very gently and see what happens and I believe it might be a case of taking the get the buffer beam off again to help dismantle the model so we'll try that see if the buffer beam will come off yeah that one's come off put that in there and let's start with the two screws underneath see the front one's got a washer on it there so we'll start with that one with the washer Right, pop that to one side. I think I'll leave the screw in with the washer in that so I know where it goes. There's like a spring there, it gives it spring loading, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, there's definitely a big crack appearing across there, so I might need to degrease that. There's a lot of oil on there. Try and degrease that and see if we can get some super glue on that to put a bit of strength back in it. And do maybe do the same trick again and try and screw a bit of plastic across it or something. Not ideal, but it is what it is. Right, that's a long screw, that one, that goes with that. Let's pop that motor over the back out of the way. Okay. Now, will this come apart? I oh, see the draw bar's going through there. So I think we're going to need to get the front out first. I'm not sure if I need to take this screw out as well, which is holding this spring clip in, I think I will, just for the, see if that's holding the model together as well. Yeah, it was quite a long screw. Could well be doing something. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's cool. <coughs> no, quite a nice big weight in the body there. Body's in, seems to be in good condition, apart from the missing nameplate. Um, I have to keep my eye open, see if I can spot one of them somewhere, won't I? And what have we got here? Okay. Right, yeah, it looks like the uh, little wiper contacts that go on the back of the wheels on there. So I'm guessing maybe they just need a clean. Right, let's work out how does this come apart. As I say, there's that big crack in the underframe there, which all seems to be part of this moulding here, potentially. Yep. Okay. Well, maybe the next thing to do is undo this. Let's go and get a smaller screwdriver. Let's undo this one and see what happens. Pop that there. Now, 
know, does that help in any way? Ah, we've got a bit of movement on this under frame. Okay, and I reckon if I undo the draw bar, maybe that's what's holding the under frame together. Let's undo this draw bar screw. There we go. Keep that all together. It's got a little, yes, yeah, in two pieces with a washer either side of it as well, I think. So. There's a little bit of movement, but not much. Here we go. Aha. Right, that's been enough to expose the contacts. Yeah, they're pretty grubby. Pretty grubby, so I think we'll give them a clean, maybe with a cotton bud. Got one here, one here, one here, and the same the other side. We give them a clean with a cotton bud with some contact cleaner. And then just try and ease the whole thing gently back together. So I was a little bit concerned about that. Oh, this does come off. I can feed the wire through here. Okay. Gently does it. I hit the wire through there. And I think now I can degrease this and attend to that crack that's gone all the way through it. Right, we'll do that first, I think. Let's pop that to one side. <clears throat> Give this a spray with some contact cleaner. Try and degrease it. This is a lot more um, detailed than my old Hornby models, so I think uh, it's a case of being a lot more, a lot more gentle with it, and also the plastic seems to be a lot more fragile as well. As I say, I've never really had any experience with these um, Airfix models, so I don't know if this is normal for these that they're quite fragile when they get older. I'm guessing they are. Okay. Yeah, let's take that right off now. Now you can see, look, that's coming off completely. So we'll do, a, we'll do a bit of the old super glue on that once I've got it all dried and cleaned up. I think I'll just do a bit of, uh, spend a bit of time cleaning this up and degreasing it, and I'll come back to you when it's degreased. Right, I've uh, super glued these two back together. I'm going to leave them to go off for a bit, and then I think I'll do the same trick as before. I'll cut a little strip of plastic to stick over the top of that, just to try and give a bit of strength to that to hold that all together. And, Hopefully this will keep this uh, dear old loco going for a bit longer. Okay, while that underframe's drying, I'm going to get some uh, contact cleaner on here and uh, give these contacts a little clean. And then I might go around. And, I'll go around and give the wheels a clean as well. Let's spray some contact cleaner on a cotton bud and just give these a little give these a little gentle wipe off, just to clean them up. I don't want to get too many. These are really, really fragile. So we don't want to get too carried away with these. But we are getting dirt off them, look. Be really careful of this mechanism as well. And I think I'll also go around, I'm going to go around as well and clean the wheels up. Let's have a look, see what we've got on the wheels. Not too bad actually, but they, I can see there's dirt on there. There you go, look, I'm gonna go around and clean all the wheels as well. So I won't film that, it's just a matter of going around with the cotton bud and the contact cleaner and cleaning all these wheels up and uh, getting them nice and clean, ready for when we put it all back together. Okay, so that under frame's glued back together and I've, as I say, I've, I've cut a piece of plastic out to make like a splint to go across the crack, which is you know, far from ideal, but hopefully it'll do the trick and uh, keep the old girl going for a bit. Now I think before I put this back in the locomotive body, I'm going to go around and oil the uh, all the little connecting rods, just a tiny drop of oil, and also uh, a drop of oil on the axles as well, just to help it with a bit of free running. Not too much, I don't want it swimming in oil like when I took it apart, um, so we'll just put a tiny drop of oil. You know, you can barely, so you can barely almost see it, but it is there. 
carry on like that and do all of that and do all the axle points as well. And then we'll put it back in the locomotive body. Right, let's pop this back in the body. Draw bar through the slot at the back, like that. Gently ease that back in there like that. Okay, so, got a normal screw there. Let's get a little screwdriver and just see if we can run that down, just to get it started. See if it finds its way. Yep, seems to be. And then the next one was this screw here at the front, and this had this uh, spring clip assembly on it for the little separate bogey at the front, wasn't it? Is that bogey or pony truck? I can't remember what they're called now. I'm going to keep that straightish as I can. Okay. Yeah, okay. And last but not least, pop that back on. What I'll do is I'll get the screw installed in that first, I think, like that, and pop it back on. I mean, that is right where that nasty split was as well on the underframe, so hopefully it'll tighten up. Seems to be able to pivot okay, so I don't want to go too mad with it. Yeah, that seems to pivot all right. And it's still got its springiness, so fingers crossed. Right. Okay, so that's that done. Pop that there out of the way. I think the next thing to do now is the brushes and the uh, springs have all had a clean. We can pop those back in. Oh, these are fiddly. Right. One. Two. And then a spring and a cap. Again, pretty fiddly. I think I'm going to put the spring maybe. That's it, like that. And then also, this held these down as well, didn't it? The, the uh, suppressor. So let's try and get that. I'm just going to straighten these up a bit while I get this back on. And these are just a push fit. Like that. Okay, there's one. And now the other one. That's the other spring in and click down. So there we go. That's the motor back together. I think what I might do now is just put, apply some power and uh, make sure it's running before we go any further. So let's do that. All right, let's attach the power supply. Let's see if we've got any life in this motor. Yeah, we have. It's a bit noisy at the moment, but it's a dry, isn't it? I haven't lubed it yet, so we'll just apply a bit of oil. Just make, just want to make sure it runs both ways, really. Yeah, that's good. Okay, we'll apply some oil to that and a bit of grease on the gears. We can get through that gap in the top of there to apply some oil to those gears. So that's quite handy. Other end of the armature. So these gears. So the gears on this side. Also to the axles. 
just going to be in there. Especially I haven't been able to take this apart. I can drop, drop a little bit of oil on the axles as well, if that's even possible. Let that feed in. Let's get some power in again and see if it's uh, any quieter. See if we need to maybe put a dob of grease on the gears as well. Just going to run it like this first and see how it sounds. I don't think it was ever the quietest thing to start with anyway. Hang on. Oops. Oh, that's quieted it down considerably. <laughs> All fingers and thumbs today. Well, that's quietened it down. Try it the other way. I'll let that run for a few minutes and uh, see if it any, needs any more oil applying to it. Just have a careful look over it. And maybe I'll put a tiny bit of white grease on those gears and then run it as well. Let's do that. Turn that off for a sec. Let's just do that. Right, I just got a little bit of that of white grease I had and put it on the end of the screwdriver and just applied a tiny bit to the gears and let it work its way in. And now I'll just leave it running for a while. And um, once that's all circulated in, I'll then stop it and go over it and wipe any excess off with the cotton bud. And I think we can put that back in the tender. Brilliant. And just add a dab of super glue to those cracks in the motor casing as well. Hopefully that will stop them spreading. Place the motor back in the tender frame. And then these uh, the wires from the loco need to come up through this slot in here. Bingo. There we go. And then the loco will sit on, the draw bar will sit on that notch there, like so. And then the motor weight also has a cutout in it to facilitate those wires. I'm going to solder them back on in a sec. But we'll just get that in place. And then we can do these two screws up. Screw the weight down, get the screw in there, there you go, that's it, just see if we can solder these wires back on, yeah, that's okay, yep. Sold on that line, I think. Great, looks okay. We'll give it a quick test. Right, just want to check the uh, motor is picking up power through the locomotive's wheels and the pickups. Yeah, there we go. Good. So the wiring through is okay, that's great. Um, I think now we'll put the uh, tender body back on. Okay, we've got, oh yeah, we've got one screw in to hold the draw bar in. Through here. And then the buffers also help to lock it in as well, don't they, I think? They go through the tender casing and into the frame. Like so. And there's two final screws here. Okay. There we go. Done, I think. And uh, all you need now is a bit of a test up in the attic.
just some quick footage guys because it's freezing up here today and I'm not hanging about but at least it's running and it's on the layout fantastic well let's just have a closing summing up and see what we think of it well there we go guys it's running that's the main thing um yeah what do i think of this particular model f it's model it's very plasticky and uh very brittle you only touch it and it seems to want to crack and fall apart but then it's it's old isn't it so that's probably part of the reason i also think that the uh tender drive wheels could do with some new traction tires i think they're a bit stretchy and a bit slippy so maybe i'll have a research and see if you can still buy traction tires anywhere and put a new set of traction tires in it, and i think that would improve it a lot but anyway i'm glad it's all running and back together um if you're stuck with it hope you enjoyed watching it um thanks for watching the channel please like share and subscribe and hope to see you again soon for more adventures on Petrol Junction. Take care, everybody, and bye for now.